In modern society, we're sick, overweight, chronically inflamed and can't focus. We need to go back to first principles, eating the way our paleolithic ancestors did. At least that's what the supporters of the carnivore diet will lead you to believe. But is this just another fad diet or is it really the panacea of optimal health? Could we look back in years to come and consider this one of the most unhealthy fad diets ever? Gaining significant popularity over the last number of years, the carnivore diet is being promoted by people such as Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson, and we even have medical doctors praising its benefits. If you're new around here, my name is Adam McDonald. Donald. I'm a registered performance nutritionist currently pursuing a doctorate in human performance, a competitive natural bodybuilder and a health and fitness coach. In this channel we break down complex health and fitness topics into practical applications. There are two main rules with the carnivore diet. Eat a high fat animal product rich diet with meat, eggs and full fat dairy and avoid everything else including fruits and vegetables. Now the philosophy that is positioned by fans of the carnivore diet is that our hunter gatherer ancestors spent their days on the savannah killing mammoths and other large mammals to feed their tribes. The ancient drawings on the walls of caves discovered by archaeologists rarely depict people of the past collecting berries or eating salads but rather in battle with wild ferocious beasts. At least that's their narrative. But this is where we fall at the very first hurdle. When looking at anthropology research as opposed to listening to self-professed carnivore experts it's clear that there's evidence of a plant-based consumption dating back thousands of years ago. We have evidence of oat processing in Italy over 30,000 years ago and even signs of cooked plant roots in Africa 170,000 years ago. Both of these falling right in the middle of the paleo period. According to biological anthropologist Dr. Nathaniel Dominey who researches human evolution, we know that humans had a mixed diet and we can verify that in part by looking at modern humans that continue to hunt and gather food. In fact, in an unconnected hunter-gatherer world, the diet largely varied depending on the distance to the equator. According to this paper by Cordain and colleagues, the closer one was to the equator, the more they would rely on plants as part of their diet. That ranged anywhere from 55% for those living in sub-Saharan Africa to as low as 10% for those living in the Arctic circle. So although in a very interconnected world today many people from all corners of the earth eat somewhat similar diets, hundreds of thousands of years ago humans ate what was most readily available to them. The reality is that the idea that our paleolithic ancestors ate in any certain one way is divorced from what the actual historic evidence depicts. But perhaps you don't really care about the ancestral part and you just care about optimal health and performance. But this is where we see more major red flags. The carnivore diet's effects on the gut are probably one of its most touted benefits, whether it's less bloating, gas and inflammation or completely fixing certain gut issues altogether. The anecdotes can be found all over the internet. And fiber technically isn't essential so why consume something that our body doesn't need, right? Most supporters of the diet will say that we don't really have any scientific research on the carnivore way of living given it's so new so it's difficult to say if there are any negative side effects of eating no plants. But this really isn't quite true. Long before the carnivore diet became a thing, a group of researchers from Harvard University asked the question, how does an animal based diet affect the gut compared to a plant based diet? The participants in this study followed a diet that was consistent with what we call now the carnivore diet including only cheese meat and eggs for five days they then had a one month washout period where they consumed their normal balanced diet followed by five more days of a plant-based diet consisting of grains legumes fruits and vegetables interestingly after only day two the animal-based diet resulted in significant shifts in gut bacterial diversity which remained until the participants went back to their old way of eating well this is a good thing right well not really you see increased gut bacteria is typically seen as a positive but that's usually in the context of a diet rich in plants. As most people know, we have good bacteria and bad bacteria in our gut and increased diversity is only beneficial if it's an increase in this good bacteria. What the scientists noted was that there were specific types of bacteria that increased the most. B, Wadsworthia, A, Prudredidins, and Bacterioids. All of these are bile resistant, leading to an increase in specific bile acids associated with intestinal inflammation and liver cancer. Interestingly, in this study, there was one lifelong vegan. Before consuming the animal-based diet, his levels of these bile resistant bacteria were almost negligible but were completely flipped on their head once he consumed the animal only foods. They also found that there was a significant reduction in the amount of postbiotics such as short chain fatty acids in those following a carnivore diet compared to the plant based diet. This makes a lot of sense since short chain fatty acids are the gases that result from the breakdown of fiber in your intestines such as acetate, butyrate and propionate. These all play important roles in appetite regulation, intestinal barrier function, metabolic health, lipid metabolism, immune function and colorectal cancer protection. So if health is important to you, these are not things that you necessarily want to compromise. An important caveat here is that the gut bacteria change relatively fast once subjects switch back to their normal diet and those who went from a mixed diet to a plant only diet showed little differences, meaning that you probably don't need to completely cut out meat, just don't completely cut out fruits and vegetables. Now we can't dismiss the anecdotal evidence that some people claim they do feel better when they eliminate everything but animal products. This is typically due to things like food sensitivities, food intolerances or food allergies. Certain foods can cause more gas production and pain 
maintain, but an elimination diet starting with reduction of foods on the FODMAPs list would be more conducive to long-term health than completely removing all non-animal produce. Heart health, or more specifically cardiovascular health, isn't something that the carnivorous primals typically say improves by only eating animal produce, but I've never heard them talk about the potential dangers. It's not the food itself per se, but the high saturated fat content that the carnivore diet often contains. One of the most famous nutrition scientists of all time, Ansel Keys, found that in the 1950s, saturated fat increased blood cholesterol levels by twice the amount that polyunsaturated fats lowered cholesterol levels. Keyes stated that the most significant dietary change that someone can make to improve their heart health is to improve their PS ratio. In other words, the level of polyunsaturated fat compared to saturated fat in your diet. This means eating more items such as nuts, seeds, and oily fish, and limiting foods like fatty red meat and butter, often two staples of the carnivore diet. And I haven't even began to touch on the cholesterol lowering effects of consuming fiber. Now, one pretty decent argument made by the carnivore camp is that some nutrients are more bioavailable in animal produce than in plants. And that is often true, particularly when we talk about things like DHA, vitamin A, and iron. But we can't get all of the diet beneficial nutrients alone from animal products, nor should nutrient bioavailability be the primary reason as to why we choose to include or exclude foods from the diet. Phytonutrients, which are chemicals that give plants their distinct colors, tastes, and aromas, although non-essential, can have profound health and well-being benefits. These are not found in animal-based foods. And this is where we can talk about the essential fallacy. We need essential nutrients in order to survive, but for optimal health and performance, we need to go far beyond that. It's not essential that you have Wi-Fi or an iPhone, but it can certainly be beneficial. For example, fiber, which is not in the carnivore diet, is not essential for humans and is often argued as to why we should avoid it. But we know from lots of research that it is beneficial for overall health. On the flip side, carnivore supporters will frequently say that we should seek out cholesterol-rich foods, such as fatty cuts of beef, because cholesterol is essential for cell membrane function. But there is zero scientific evidence to support the need for cholesterol in the diet because our body can produce it in abundance by itself. In fact, high cholesterol in the diet can contribute to cardiovascular disease over the long term. It really takes some major mental gymnastics and avoidance of science to believe that a meat-only diet is a health-promoting way of living. Plants contain certain chemicals and properties that carnivores often refer as toxic for humans. The idea is that these toxins such as oxalates, phytates, and lectins block nutrient absorption and are harmful for humans and therefore we should be avoiding them at all costs. But the reality is, while plants are higher in these anti-nutrient compounds, the poison is in the dose and we need to look at outcome data over mechanistic speculation. Consuming some of these plants in their raw form can cause food poisoning from time to time, but it is recommended for things like kidney beans that you soak them before you eat them. And on the whole, the evidence for the health benefits of consuming these types of fruits and vegetables is overpoweringly strong. It is important to remember that we don't consume nutrients in isolation. We don't consume oxalates or lectins by themselves. We consume them packaged in spinach, peas, or similar. And there's no evidence that foods containing these nutrients are themselves going to be harmful for your health when prepared properly. Without sounding like a total hater, in theory, the carnivore diet can be effective for losing fat. And if you do have a decent amount of fat to lose, this potentially could be a net positive for your overall health. Although no direct research in this area on the carnivore diet exists, this meta-analysis comparing the ketogenic diet, which is essentially what the carnivore diet is, to a low-fat diet found that there were similar effects on weight loss. However, the ketogenic diet did increase LDL cholesterol more. With that said, as long as you maintain a calorie deficit for long enough, you will lose weight eating literally anything. It's not what I recommend for optimal health or performance, but it's the first law of thermodynamics. A couple of years ago, I interviewed Anthony Howard Crow, who only ate ice cream and protein powder for 100 days. He lost 32 pounds from start to finish by simply tracking his calories and maintaining a constant calorie deficit. The number one rule that I've always advised people when it comes to the diet is to make sure that what you're doing is sustainable. But today, I want to add a second, is to make sure that what you're doing is not actively harming yourself. If you want to follow a carnivore diet, that's fine by me, and I won't think any less of you as a person. But the idea that animal produce only diet is something that primal humans used to do or follow, or that it's better for your health than a balanced diet is simply nothing more than a fairy tale rhetoric. If you want to find out more information about what a healthy balanced diet would look like, then I recommend checking out this other video that I made here.